fellas, and welcome back to Cringe Confessional, the worst thing you've ever seen. I set up a site, cringe.coney.gg, where people can send me the worst stories of their life, the most embarrassing tales and stories that they've ever gone through. And a lot of people did it. So many, in fact, that I just now got to January of this year. That's right, we're in November, and now I'm starting on January of this year. So please stop leaving comments if I've seen your thing. I haven't seen it yet. But what you will see are 40 terrible stories tonight. Well, you guys won't see as many because you're on YouTube. A certain amount, several scary stories tonight of the worst moments of other people's lives. Let's all enjoy it together, shall we? Oh, I forgot to introduce Cringebot. Oh, whatever. We'll forget Cringebot for this episode. I was in college, and they had a small convenience store next to my dorm. Okay. One time, I went to get a snack and decided on a banana. Ooh, banana. Delicious. Mmm. While I was waiting in line to pay, I was tossing the banana up and down. I do that too, yeah. On the fall back down, the banana hit my hand in a weird oh. way that sent it on a new trajectory. How? Bananas don't bounce, I was still though. able to catch it, but I had to reach forward to do it. Okay. When I grabbed it, I still had some forward momentum and the banana poked the guy in front of me. Okay. He was a taller guy and the banana poked him right in the butt. All right. Uh, that's, that's bad. That's pretty bad. This is a bad start. I am excited to see how you get away with this one. I think the fact that it wasn't like a big scene makes this so much worse. Because if it was like this big like, whoa, whoa, like a big like Mr. Bean fumble, it's fine. But if it's just like this little like... That's pretty bad. What happened next, Chatter? He was a t like perfectly between the cheeks. Oh, you hit the bullseye. That's worse then. If you hit like on the side, then it's like, oh, whoops. But if you hit it in the middle, that's some concho shit, man. He turned and looked back at me, unamused. Yeah. And I was stun locked by everything that had just happened because I didn't uh -huh. have a believable reason to have poked this guy in the ass okay, with a banana. But what was, what believe, you didn't have a believable reason. What in your mind could that have been? Are you here now, Chatter? What, like, possible? You don't know this guy. I can't think of a single feasible reason. So I just said my bad, and he took a step <laughs> or two forward and turned back around. We stood in line for another 10 minutes after that. Oh, that's bad. Oh, you just said my bad. You didn't say what happened or how. It was just my bad. Because my bad makes it seem like it was just an intrusive thought that popped out of your head. It just came to life. Oops. No, that's a, that's a bad one. I throw shit all the time, too, but I don't know how you... I don't know. Like, clearly he would see you leaning down and picking up the banana. No, you grabbed the banana. So you were holding the banana when you caught it when it was in there. That's way worse, because that's on the security cam. You might go to jail. I'm going to contact the authorities. So this story takes place in the eighth grade me, and some friends were playing blackjack during Adivasary, and if we lost Advise. five times, we had to do a dare. I lost five times, as you can imagine, uh -oh. and had to do my dare. My friends gave me the dare of asking my crush. Dude, truth or dare as an adult is such a... It's so fucking cringe. Like, like not as a kid. I'm saying as an adult looking back, it's just a way for you to act on things that you everybody knows you want to do. Asking somebody out, you know, kiss on the cheek, whatever. It's just like fucking dude, man. You stupid kids. Why are you playing truth or dare at 45, Coney? Because I'm shy! I did not want to do that and did a double or nothing where I lose one more time. I do two dares. And if I Ooh, win, I'm in the clear. two dares? Oh my god, I've reached my limit already? Jesus Christ. So I had to do a second dare. Okay. The dare was for me Puberty? to be in the talent show that was coming up. Okay. Then my friends had the great idea of combining the dares into one where I asked my crush out during the talent show. Oh god. In front of the entire school. Oh dude. While being recorded. <laughs> so the talent show comes up, and I was the very last ACT. Oh my god, this sounds like a proposal. This is so romantic. You have some shitty friends. I asked her on stage, and you know what she told me? Fuck no, why would I ever date you? In front of the entire school while. Uh... Well, that's how it ends. I don't know why it ended so like that, but... The, yeah, and what that's, I asked, that's just she how said, it ends right there. The worst she could say is no. Well, I mean, she did the worst she could say, which was no. It just happened to be in front of thousands of people. That's your friend's fault. They should have they should have looked this up. Like, they should have done the, the recon to be like, all right, she's going to say yes, right? Because otherwise we need to back this out. This isn't even AWOL, yeah. This poor girl just got taken on stage. And honestly, she's probably playing it up too. I'd be mad as hell if I was her. Putting me on the spot? I'm about to make a whole performance out of this. Bad friends, bad idea, bad all around, but good story. <laughs>
My wife told me the best story the other day, and I got her permission to share it on the stream. Cool. Early on in our courtship, we split up for about a month. Prosec courtship. I can't. During this time, she went on a date with a guy <laughs> named Chadwick. Okay. Chadwick was... Uh, this says not his real name, so everybody knows it says not his real name in, in parentheses. Chadwick was a professional skateboarder. Ooh! Chadwick offered to have her come over for a homemade meal. Okay. After the meal, he suggested to go bar hopping for a little bit. Uh-huh. On the way to the first bar, she noticed him walking quite close to the wall, rather than beside her. She asked him, he jokingly, like what he was doing over there. The guy turns, smug look on his face and reveals the nature of his skateboarding career. What? He was a professional toe dicker, and had been skating his tiny little board along the wall. One of you is lying. I don't know if it's you, or if it's your wife. One of you two is lying. This did not happen. As if a dam had been broken, the guy apparently chattered about to Dex, and nothing else for the next three hours. Chatter, I don't think this happened. I think your wife is telling you this story to, to, to make you feel better or something. I don't think, I, I don't, why would, this can't be real. I don't think this is real. I think your wife probably met some very nice, interesting, and and great people while you guys were apart. And now she tells you the deck decker story to make you feel better and like you're the only one for her. That's what I think. I think she's covering something up. After the bar hopping, he brought her back to his place <laughs> to reveal his custom tiny skate apart. Okay. Plural. We got back together the next day. Oh my god. Apparently okay. that's how bad the sex was. Okay, <laughs> okay, still still bang the tech deck guy! Still banged him! I mean we can make fun of him all we want. He was he was playing on the fucking wall and doing kickflips on the side of a building, but we still slept with him. We still went to his bed. Probably did tricks off her tummy. <laughs> uh, still hit, bro. I don't know. Like, I'm just gonna uh, I don't... Uh, yeah. She told yeah. me the whole story and asked me, yeah, teary-eyed, okay. if I was jealous. Yeah. I, struggling to hold in my laughter, told her that I cannot imagine anything that would possibly make me less jealous. I'd be pretty jealous, dude. I think I would. Maybe jealous isn't the right word, but I'd be mad at her. Like, sweetie, we got, what, do you, what do you see in me? You, you were in this guy's... I don't know, man. I, maybe I just have a different perspective. I don't know. I'd be disappointed. That's probably the right word. Yeah. I don't believe this. A pro tech decker? So so the reason I don't believe this is because I don't think they exist. Do they really? Because, like, when I was in school, they were just starting out, and, like, it was just, like, a stupid thing that kids did. Is this, like, a real thing people do? Yes? I don't think this is a real story. But I don't know if 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 she told you this or if you but if you told me this. Did your wife exist? I think this is an elaborate trick. I don't know who this was because this is all anonymous on cringe.coding.gg. Go ahead and submit now. You commentate Smash? Yeah, but I wouldn't be... How do I put this? Being a Smash caster is not something that I would reveal with childlike glee on my first date. You get what I'm saying? You gotta ease into that shit, man. You can't, you can't be doing tricks on the side of a wall like, I hope she asked me. I'm gonna wait for her to ask and then I will say it hat in hand with great regret. I commentate Mario vs. Pikachu. I'm sorry. It's something we're both gonna have to deal with. I was 16 and had finally gotten the opportunity to go on a date with a my crush. Okay. Neither of us drove, so we both convinced our parents to drop us off at a theater. That's sweet. My mother had things to do well before the show, so I was there a bit early. I decided to buy the tickets to the movie so I could spend some time in the arcade while I waited. Uh-huh. Five minutes before the show she calls me and says she has to cancel. Ah. So now I'm stuck at the movie theater and feel forced to watch the movie alone. Okay. Coney, it was the opening weekend of Happy Feet. <laughs> I was the only non-kid or parent oh in a completely packed crowd. Hey, hey! My mom laughed at me all the way home. Hey, you're a reviewer! You're here for the local newspaper! Happy Feet is a delight that will enchant audiences. You have an angle here, it's fine. Hey, animation is a real artistic medium. True, fellas? Animation is a real medium! Stop calling me a baby, I'm not a kid! I feel like this isn't that. Well, if it's a completely packed crowd and you're just a lone guy, just walking in. You're 16? Nah, there's worse things. Animation Twitter would call you a hero for that. Animation is is real and valid or whatever the fuck. I don't know. It's fine. Her mom laughing at me is kind of funny. So a little background. I was born with both of my Achilles tendons shortened, Ooh. which, in practice, 
Mad I would walk on the tip of my toes until surgery rid me of this perk. Ooh, that's a bad perk. Oh my god. How do you elongate an Achilles tendon? Do you go in there and pull it down? Until then, though, I had a lot of misadventures. <laughs> One particular I day I remember was when I was 15, and mom told me to buy some groceries. Uh -huh. As I was going to the local grocery store, a very well-dressed man stopped me in my tracks, <laughs> and we began to trade some small talk. Why? He's genuinely lovely, and before I realized it, he led me to a very nice empty building with only one woman sitting down in one of what seems to be at least 50 chairs. He leaves me in there with the woman, and comes back a few minutes later with his hands wet, and the woman grabs my shoulders from behind. What the fuck is going on here? The guy tells me to relax and puts his wet hand on my forehead. I now realize what's going on. I'm in the new local church, and this priest is about to exorcise me. What? He thinks you have a demon because of your feet? Where do you live? Is this just what happens in the middle of America? Utah. Oh, not again. He and the woman start screaming and telling Satan to put my feet on the ground. This goes on for, like, five minutes, and then they stop and ask me why I walk like that. I love the idea. It just, get out of here, Satan! Get out of here! Okay, it's not working. Bro, why do you walk funny? He's yelling at him for ten minutes to release the demon in his legs, and then he just, what? What's going on there? I explain everything and go buy my groceries for my mom. Before I left, he asked <laughs> me not to forget him, and I surely didn't. Oh, you'll see him again, Chatter. I have a feeling you'll see him again at some point in your life. What's a new version? New version of this story? Is it him again? Part two? The quest updated. Wait! One day in either sophomore or junior year, I was grabbing dinner with my friends at Moe's and somehow got on the topic of old toy commercials. How you guys like Moe's, by the way? Not a Moe's guy. I'm a Chipotle guy, uh, but, but Cadoba's great too. Moe's over Chipotle? Shut the fuck up. One of the ones we talked about was how many animal-themed through pillow commercials we had all watched. Sure, like yeah. Pillow Pets or Flashlight Friends. Those are, and how those as time has gone on that yeah. specific theme had become even more prevalent. And the ideas for the pillows had become more and more ridiculous. Like unicorns, so trying to make a joke that yeah, I thought might be a bit crass for dinner, but decided to make any way I say you know eventually they're going to start like making these out of human flesh and call it. Like Flashlight Friends. Suddenly silence until one of the two girls asks if I know what a flashlight is. Uh, I did not. Uh, so the conversation took a pivot from talking about one man. type of toy to a completely different type, and my inexperience quickly became very evident. Ah. I swear this is real. Oh, I believe you. I believe this one 100%. Oh, dude. Really bad roll on that joke. I, I think it's just... You ever have a joke in your head and you're like, this is probably too far. I don't know if I should go that far. I don't think I should say it. You have this, like, inkling in the back of your mind. You're like, this is probably too far. This is too crass. But, like, what if it bangs, though? Right? What if this hits? And you say it, and you're like, Ugh. But it's way worse if you don't know what the fuck you're even mentioning. Like, you don't even know what you're referencing. And now everybody has to teach you what a masturbatory aid is. Yeah, that's just a fail check on the joke. Yeah. This story is from seventh grade. Okay. I must have been Damn, 12 or 13 years old. Raid. I must have been 12 or 13 years old and don't know why ever though this was a good idea. Everyone in the school knew the sink in the boys bathroom was loose on one side and you could just spin it on the wall. What? Woo! What do you mean spin it? Like laterally or like what? I don't know which way you mean. You could spin the sink. The fact that this is being dropped so casually. I've never seen a spinning sink. Spin the sink, bro. Let's get See? it. See? Well, at lunch, I had the bright idea to just try and take the sink off the wall altogether, and I did. Okay. I panicked and didn't know what to do when a classmate came in and started laughing and asked how I did it. I poorly explained and asked for help to put it back. <laughs> we put it back on the wall, and I told him to come back as soon as the last class ends, but before we go okay. to the buses. The time rolls around and I sneak back to the bathroom you with my friend. Sneak back I in? gave him okay. all my papers and folders to make room for the sink. Okay. I eventually ended up with the sink in my backpack full closed. What is this ice? You stole the sink? I hope somebody stopped you. I hope your your backpack is just dripping wet. It's just damp as shit and the principal is like, what the fuck is that kid? What does he have in his, his backpack? I somehow make it home to show my mom, who immediately made me take it back and I got suspended for two days. You show your mom? Mom, check this out. You think she'd be like, wow, great work, son. What 
how did, how big is this sink? Like, how does it fit in your backpack? Where did you go to school? How big is your backpack? How is this cringe? I, I, I kind of like this story. When I was 18, I had a girlfriend. And unfortunately, <laughs> okay. earlier that year, she found out her cousin got into a motorcycle accident. Oh, that's awful. He ended up losing his leg in the accident. Oh. And everyone was in the family was very grateful he was alive. Yeah, Jesus. About three months later, Thanksgiving came around. And every year the Cowboys have a football game on Thanksgiving Day. Okay. I do happen to be a huge Cowboys fan and was in the living room while her family was 15 or so feet away in the kitchen. Uh -huh. And as her family was in tears, telling him they're thankful for him being alive the Cowboys scored a game-winning touchdown. And I stood up cheering and clapping. After my celebration I see her family staring at me with tears in their eyes and my girlfriend told me what they were talking about. To this day, don't cringe when thinking about it. Let's go! <laughs> An actual real Drake. It sounds so sarcastic. Like, they thought that you were, like, being so patronizing. Like, oh my god, I'm just so happy you're alive. Yes, yes! Thank you! Yes! Yes, we survived! They only got one leg! You will not take both of my legs! That's a really good story. I love it. So, uh, by the way, the uh, the story has parentheses and now ex-girlfriend, so I think they broke up on the spot. It doesn't say that in the story, but I think they broke up at that exact moment. So Someone said, cringe uh, confirmed Cowboys fan. Is that the cringe in this story? <laughs> Near graduation and most of our friend group was going to split up to different colleges. Okay. So this was our last time together. Aww, My crush was sad. there and it was going great. I am a horror movie buff and have a lot of props and memorabilia from horror movies. Okay. But I knew to hide my power level until my crush wanted some alone time. I was excited and forgot. Uh huh. Brought her to my room and my Friday oh the my 13th God. weapon collection was not very cool for her. <laughs> This is a uh, oh that one's tough because if she likes horror movies this is a this is a nat twenty right like this is a this is a high roll if she's into horror movies like you are you are bonded for life <laughs> sleep in my machete room Chad show her your interests no not if the interests are immediately watching people get mutilated and killed even if it's a movie dude I can't. You know. She laughed and told the rest of the party oh, to come God. see the freaky stuff oh, in my God. room. Oh, God. Oh, no. That's worse than anything else I could have imagined. They all laughed and oh, said they didn't realize dude. I was such a freak. That's bad. Lost contact with all of them after. Oh. They still do little reunions, but without me. Oh, man. That's bad. Wait, but you're... Wait, it's... This is high school friends that are going to colleges. They don't... They weren't your friends. That's shitty friends, man. Right? How could they not know? Yeah, like, one of them would probably know if they're real friends that you were really into slasher shit. And it's like... This is just sad more than anything. This is the start of a slasher movie. This is Scream 6. That's actually pretty good. Dude, the kid... The, the, the college kids start getting picked off one by one. Ah, they didn't appreciate cinema? Dude, sell this idea to Liongate, or whoever did those. You're describing American Psycho 2, I think? Wait, I think it does. It is that, right? With Mila Kunis? It's something like that. So I have two stories, but I will only include one in this submission. Okay. Anyway, I was in freshman year of high school, and I am a nerd, so I don't have many friends, let alone friends who are girls. Okay. However, I was friends with these twin girls, and I had a massive crush on one of them. Sure. One day, I was invited to do some adventuring, which was just us walking around abandoned parts of town with big wooden swords that we had. <laughs> okay. So we were walking, and we each had bags, cool. and it was nice. We even built a snowman in front of an abandoned railroad. But then disaster struck. As we were walking, we saw a squirrel, and I am a huge Poemon fan. By the way, so in my bag, I had these plastic poke balls, you know, because we were already bringing swords, so why not? But I then threw it at the squirrel and yelled, Go. You didn't hit the screen, did you? I don't think you hit it. No way you did. And they just stopped and stared at me for what seemed like forever. Then I picked up the ball and walked to their house with them where I got picked up. I then got friend zoned later that year. So you did a Pokemon move and they didn't know what Pokemon was, so you just looked really weird. 
that's the vibe here. Again, if she liked Pokemon, that might, uh, you know what I mean? I mean, it's definitely too early. That was definitely fucking weird. Don't get me wrong. That's their fault at that point? No. <laughs> no, I still think this is pretty bad to throw a, a plastic Pokeball at a wild animal and just be like, hey, you know, like that thing I like. Do you know that thing I like? Yeah, I, that that's nearly animal abuse. Worse if they did know, honestly. No, I think it's... Like, at least if you do know Pokemon, you're like, oh, that's what this kid's going for. If you don't know it, you're like, what the fuck is this guy? Does he do this to all squirrels? <laughs> They're playing with wooden swords. They had to have known. You can get a wooden sword for $6 at the Renaissance Fair. They don't fucking know. I like Pokemon, and I think he's a massive loser. Okay, Chad. That's not... The point of this is not to make fun of the people, okay? This person uh, bared their soul and was very vulnerable, despite being anonymous. Let's be nice. Come on. Sorry, that was me. That's okay. It's all part of the experience. The point of this series is to remember that we've all been cringe at some point. Okay? The point of this is not to make fun of it. This is this is very fucking embarrassing. But how old were you? This is always what I go for. Freshman year of high school. Oh, Jesus. Ooh, that's bad. That's, that's worse. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. Hey, I bet you got new friends, though. Right? I bet you got new friends, and they all love Pokemon and throwing things at Robin. It's very funny. In the summer, I work as a camp counselor. The camp is in a beautiful little nook of the woods, cool. filled with birds, chipmunks, and other forest creatures. Sure. Seriously, they're everywhere. Great. One afternoon, as my campers and I are walking the to last the cabin guy after near lunch, you know I hear shouting and screaming coming from behind the dining hall. Oh, Jesus! I lock eyes with a few other counselors, and we <laughs> practically bolt over to see a flock of a dozen seven- okay. and eight-year-olds all screaming and pointing. <laughs> okay. What had happened? Did a kid fall? Was uh, there a wolf or a bear? No, uh, it was the manager's cat with a chipmunk <laughs> in its mouth. We try our best to move the campers away. Oh, it's just oh, nature God, or it'll be fine. Dude. Until a camper from my cabin goes running toward the cat, howling at the top of his little lungs for the cat to let go. The chipmunk immediately oh, gets no. dropped, oh, but it no. can't it, run away. It can't it get away. It's, oh my God. It was just weakly hopping in oh place. Oh my like God, sort of kill it. You have to kill it. Toy, you have so to kill it. So the all scream in horror as the cat <laughs> pounces it again. Oh my God, dude. A live demonstration. Just live, uncensored Animal Planet. This now is I'm reality. Amber, who's throwing punches at the cat? <laughs> who's hunting down the chipmunk? Who's frantically hobbling away for its dear tiny oh life? The chipmunk eventually escaped, disappearing beneath a nearby I guess. building. The campers all cheered. The <laughs> other camp counselors and I just. Hooray! <laughs> this horribly mangled animal that will surely bleed to death and has no executive function beyond just bleeding out and dying cold and alone. Hooray! He got away! He'll be okay. He'll go see the chipmunk doctor. Holy the shit, other dude. camp counselors and I just sort of looked at each other and tried to move things along as if nothing had happened. Yeah, the story I... stuck around for an entire week. Holy shit, dude. That's tremendous. That's not really cringe, but I love this story. It's like a scene from an early 2000s comedy. Dude, you gotta put this to print. Oh, actual cinema. But crisis averted, I guess. I guess, yeah. The, <laughs> I think the scene of all the kids cheering is the best one. That's tremendous. Hooray! He got away! <laughs> Good shit by the chipmunk for not dying in front of the children, though. Yeah, that chipmunk stayed strong. He knew better. Good for him. Great story. And you know what? It's an even better one to end on. That's gonna do it for tonight's stories. What was your favorite? Was it the one? Well, no, we can't talk about that one. I was about to say one that probably got edited out. What was your favorite? Comment below and let me know. I also stream on YouTube, uh, my normal time. So if you want to ever come in and see the stories that don't make it to air, of which there are a lot, remember to come through, subscribe, and like the video. And now I'm going to reunite you guys. Hit wait. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye, YouTube. Remember to submit your story, cringe.coney.gg. Submit your story and maybe I'll talk about it. It'll probably take a long time, though, because I'm still in January and February of this year. Who knows? By the time we do another Cringe Confessional, it might be 2024. See you in the next year. Happy New Year and Merry Christmas. Goodbye, everybody.